Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with David Breden and the Spending Time Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about why Movado purchased MVMT. Um, mm. Some people know this news, some people don't. <clears throat> kind of insider watch world news, but Movado, which is a publicly traded American watch group that owns the Movado brand, uh, Concord brand, does some licenses. I think they do coach watches and things like that. Um, actually, let's look right here on the Movado Group website. Our brands, <coughs> Movado, Concord, Ebel, Olivia Burton, Coach, Hugo Boss, Lacoste, Tommy Hilfinger, Scudio. Hilfinger? Oh, sorry, Hilfinger. I always want to say Hilfinger. I don't know. Hilfinger just sounds wrong. <laughs> just looks like it should be finger. Anyways, yeah. that's a mistake. Scuderia, Ferrari, Orologi. I wonder what those look Orologeria. like. Orologeria. Uh, Rebecca Minkoff and Uri Minkoff. Okay, so that's a lot of different watches from some popular brands. Movado Group is, again, it's still around. It's, And like I said, it's a publicly traded company. Ironically enough, the very previous uh, podcast that we did, I was looking around on the Movado website because I spoke to Paul Ziff that used to work at Movado. And we were saying a lot of really good things about Movado's history. Um back in the 1980s and 1990s they were brilliant at marketing they spent a lot of money um, getting news out there with you know a relatively small actually assortment of products they used the money that they made from the museum dial watch which is a whole other story to try to produce a lot of other things and around the sort of turn of the century around the 2000s things started to change dramatically from Mabato they had some retail stores for a while, like their own stores that, that they tried and then they stopped. They've never really hit a stride with e-commerce. Um, I remember a few years ago they left Basel World. They were one of a lot. The funny thing is, you know, there's this big news about, oh, everyone's leaving Basel World. A lot of brands over the last several years have left Basel World, namely almost all of the American companies. Uh, Timex, not at Basel World. Fossil Group, not at Basel World. Movado, not at Basel World. All these big companies um, are, are not at Basel World. And Timex, uh, which owns GC watches, I think that was the the last brand to have left because they had you know multiple brands there. Yeah. Anyway, so Movado uh, left Basel World. And don't really see a lot of marketing right now. Don't really know what's going on with Movado. Always been a pretty clever company, but... I think that they they hurt a lot when, you know, traditional brick and mortar retailers, especially department stores, started going away in their importance, which has been a, a massive issue in in luxury retail, especially in the United States, where department stores are just getting a lot less sales and traffic. They were, mm -hmm. like I said, even though they 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 have e-commerce on their website, it's not particularly sophisticated. Um, I, I we don't even we rarely hear from the company. Pleasant people ra rarely hear from them, and I was actually on their website. Not a lot of new products, meaning a lot of the stuff we've seen is things that they've they've released a while. They've always been good at des design. I remember the Mo Movado Bold was probably one of the more recent collections that they came out with, and this sort of is a sporty modern take on the museum dial, um, metal watches, even some plastic watches mostly ranging uh, in a few hundred dollars, under a thousand dollars segment for the Bold, which has been a great collection. But this came out, you know, a, wh a while ago now. And I would not say Movado is a brand that has done just a ton of stuff in, in sort of the, the modern space. They've always preferred quartz watches to mechanical ones, but they've they've clearly made some mechanical watches and night one, nice ones. Um, and uh, it's it's a brand that's sort of ripe for some revival and stuff like that. We recently get news that the Movado Group has purchased MVMT. And MVMT is a Los Angeles based company that makes watches and some sunglasses and I think a few other accessories. I personally went to the MVMT office a uh was within the last year just to sort of check them out and learn a little bit about what's going on. I mean, it started by these two really young guys, I think when they were in college. Um, they're still in their 20s right now. And when I went there, I think the interesting thing was I said to myself, you know, this is a team that understands marketing 
but I wouldn't say that they really understand watches. And when you go look at their watches, I think that the highest price point is maybe a maybe a hundred and fifty dollars, maybe two hundred dollars, but they they tend to average you know under under a hundred dollars for a price point. But they were very popular because they were able to sell watches through social media marketing, which is something that the traditional watch industry and Lovato has not been able to do. Now, I have a lot of thoughts about this, um, but I think one of the first things, and, and tell me if you feel differently, David, that when you heard the news that Movado bought MBMT, weren't you kind of like, wait, what? Uh, yeah, I thought to myself, why? Why, why, why these two? What's... <laughs> Why am I hearing about this? Yeah. Why yeah. You, so why, your so your, your do you assessment is fair. What do you think they did? Why do you think Movado bought MVMT? What do you think they because were they were looking for? My impression, I I don't really know that much about MVMT and where where it's going. I mean, I know the brand and some of their watches, but I don't understand you know where they actually are going or where. I couldn't tell you where MVMT is going to be in two years. Okay, but. I guess when a group buys a brand, they know where that brand is uh, is going. So I guess they think that MVMT is successful now, and ho- and they hope that it will be even more successful in a couple of years. And maybe it does something that the brand, that sorry, the group, Moada Group, can't do, and which I guess is e-commerce. Wasn't that where you were going with it? I actually don't think. <clears throat> I actually don't think that that is why Movado bought them. Um, so let, let's let's look at a little bit bigger picture. Why does one company buy another? Now, if it's just because of a concept or an idea, Movado or anyone is better off just emulating it, right? If if there's a strategy that works for MVMT, why wouldn't it work for someone else? So they're not buying them because of a strategy. So what's left? They're buying them because of intellectual property, meaning that they have designs. Uh, and branding that apparently they think is great. Another option is because of the team. They think that there's um, a particular thing that MVMT does that other people are are able to not able to do as well. Perhaps there's some technology there, right? So if there's any proprietary technology that they've developed. That's that's definitely something else. You know, uh, I think a, a good reason that maybe the team or the technology would have been valuable because they know how to do a certain type of of e-commerce. Um, advertising, like on social media, as we discussed, or third, and this for me is the most likely scenario, the customer base. MVMT was purchased for a hundred million dollars, with a additional hundred million dollar contingency uh, amount that, if after a year or two or something like that, if there's a certain performance, that the guys that sold it will make an additional amount of money. Now, a hundred million dollars is by is nothing to scoff at. That's a great amount of money, and and course congratulations um, to the boys that started MVMT but it's not a huge amount in in sort of the the scope of why why companies are purchased MVMT has been a a little bit of a darling brand for a lot of people just getting into watches they've been seen as like oh we want to be like MVMT and again MVMT did make an appreciable about amount of money they they got a nice space I think they had some uh, investors so I think they wanted to sell. I don't think that they were necessarily playing hard to get. I'm pretty sure that they were looking uh, at potential suitors for a while. I think that it was the right time for them to sell. So the going back to the question of why did Movado get them, I think it was their customer base. And I think that to a degree it was the branding, not the, not the products or the designs or the manufacturing, but the branding as well as the customers. In my opinion, that's why they they got it. What do you think? I think that's that's fair. I think that's definitely it. It, it could not possibly be act, the actual product because it's nothing you know to write home about. It's sort of your run of the mill OEM um, stuff that you see you know produced overseas, I, which I mean, is yeah. perfectly fine. But it's not proprietary. You know the proprietary thing. You you, you know your assessment is, is is spot on is the branding and their customer base which will want to spend more money on watches you know in the next co- uh, couple of years so you can either take this brand some other place which it might you know may uh, maybe something that uh, Movado wants to do or just take uh, them within uh, within the group to some other brand I want to look at MVMT's Instagram account because that's something that they were very big on they have this link that says shop insta don't know what that means exactly here. 
shop our Instagram. Boy, this looks how behind behind the times are. So like, let's. So we're looking here, and if you're if you're looking along the screen, you can see this. This is presumably uh, some of the things that they're publishing on Instagram. We have a lot of models, uh, a lot of like aspirational stuff here, um, and of course there's a, a link to purchase the product that's that's seen in this photography. I wouldn't say that any of this is particularly innovative. It's mostly fashiony. I think the message that brand and this is something that I think a lot of the people don't understand who are at the bigger brands because they see all this they're like wow how are they doing this or this it seems to be kind of magical and I think the trick behind social media marketing and again a lot of this is just sex sales there's just a lot of you know uh, attractive people scantily clad or otherwise it's a very LA thing so I think they're doing is they're trying to say if you want to look like you're one of these people and one of these people is dressed a certain way and hanging out on concrete in LA this is the watch to wear so that if you're seen with this watch or a watch from this brand people will associate you with this particular look or this particular lifestyle and I'm pretty sure that that's what is actually appealing to the people that are viewing this on social media I think that a brand like Movado looks at this and thinks there's some, you know, secret sauce there. Now, MVMT has an interesting issue, and the interesting issue they have, which has not gone away, is they find it difficult to sell more than one watch to people. And so, so, but the idea is that once they get people into the brand to buy a watch, it's hard for them to buy multiple watches. And a brand that sells watches a hundred bucks, you have two options, or actually, for, it doesn't matter the retail price of the watch. When you are a watch brand, or any brand for that matter, when it comes to increasing your business, you have two options. Option one is to get new customers to buy product for the first time. Option two is to sell additional product to existing customers. Now, I mentioned that MVMT and brands like it almost entirely focus on social media as where they advertise. They don't really do any other type of advertising as far as I know. Everything is on Instagram, Facebook, and whatever other social media. And while these accounts like to say, you know, all these these channels like to say, oh, we have, you know, I don't know how many, you know, what is it, a billion, a million. People, a billion people or something like that that Facebook says it has or Instagram says, however, they promise or they make it seem like there's this endless amount of people to reach when in reality there is a very finite number of people to reach. And so what MVMT found is it's A, challenging, if or, or I'll guess I'll use the sort of way that they probably have to think of, expensive to acquire additional new customers such that the cost of acquiring a new customers isn't necessarily wor wor worth the work because they no longer have a, of a profit margin. And then two, they found it difficult to sell watches to the same customers, <coughs> probably because the watch experience isn't that great. Um, and it's nothing against MVMT. It's just that we know that at this price level, it is very challenging to get people excited about the brand buying multiple. So maybe buy a few. So what did MVMT do? They actually went into <laughs> other products, glasses and sunglasses. In fact, they mentioned they have way more growth in the sunglasses and glasses space, which I believe Movado probably has very little interest in. Um, as far as I know, they don't make sunglasses or anything like that. Maybe they do. I don't think that any of their. I mean, you know, they have they they do license of brands that that uh, you know s sell sunglasses, but they themselves don't. I was told that one of the reasons that Movado is interested in MBMT was because of the previous purchase of a brand called Olivia Burton. Are you familiar with that brand, David? No. Olivia Burton is a UK-based, um, I'll call it like uh, women's fashion watch and jewelry brand. Nothing, no, no, nothing high-end. Their watches are about they're you know under one hundred and fifty dollars as well. Similar, if not identical, price points to MVMT. Um, not dramatically different look, but they're a little bit decorative. They have some like animals or some floral prints on the dials. Like it's, it's just enough different to say it's like oh, it's not just like a like a boring simple watch copy, right? There's just a little bit of an added thing to it. And Olivia Burton is a brand that Movado acquired. 
that has similar type of success um, through the sort of social media audience. I don't know some of the details of this brand in terms of are they able to sell multiple watches to the same consumer, but I have a feeling that it's it, it's it's similar um, to MVMT in terms of what the brand trajectory is. So I think that Movado was galvanized by the success of Olivia Burton, and I do think that they purchased Olivia Burton at a better time in the company before it sort of reached its absolute zenith point. Mm. I think I think a brand like MVMT has reached a point and MVMT wanted to sell because MVMT in order to maintain growth or stability has to dramatically invest into product marketing and all those things that it's just not very good at and it's like oh Movado knows how to do that whereas Movado says oh they have some special sauce reaching young people that's exactly what what we want so there's this sense of needing one another but I think you and I kind of inherently know that it might not necessarily worked out work out that way. You and I are a little bit worried for Movado. Why is that? Uh, because of this, this is the direction they're taking. I guess, you know, De- it's, de- define well, that where, direction. Where, define that direction. Well, or rather, like thereof. You know, that's the that's the point. I I don't see myself being excited about a Movado watch. I know for a fact I've never been excited about a Movado watch that I can remember. I mean, the museum piece was cool but i wouldn't want to wear it or have it around it's it's boring the uh the pants off me so right now i'm just not excited and if i'm not excited and i'm I'm, i consider myself a watch guy and if i'm not excited about the brand making watches then you know how will you make other people who don't care about watches uh excited about your product movado for a while has i think made a conscious effort not to spend a lot of time working with uh, people like you who are a watch guy or a watch person. I mean, I think you and I will agree that even though they have some watches that would appeal to people like us, they've just not reached out to us. Why do you Why do you think that might be? Um, because we're a niche market, you know, and, and larger groups and larger brands that sell by the volume don't really see the point in getting um, or going after um, watch people or watch guys or no, yeah, which aficionado, which is fine. I, I, yeah, I pretty take no much everyone else has, other than Movado at this point. But I take no offense in that. You know, just because just because something is cheap or simple or whatever, it, that doesn't mean I, I will not be excited about it. I can totally get excited about cheap watches, a hundred percent. But it has to be like you know something special or something interesting, and I don't think that Movado is any of that at this point. I I look, I agree. I think they know that their audience no is, is different than there are and so, you know they have some smart watches that uh, I don't think are you know really uh, gonna sh- gonna change the the industry they're nice looking I'm looking here at the Movado connect it's a eight hundred and ninety five dollar smart watch powered that's by a lot Android wear I, I, I think I think my biggest complaint and again I have traditionally been a fan of a lot of Movado d- designs but as a watch person I find them to be very expensive I was just looking here at their um, their dive style watch that is pl- you know like just yellow gold toned and has a quartz movement it, it's What's a the nice, name of it? it's a nice looking watch the um, series 800 yeah I think so like you know over a thousand bucks wow and and we know that you know uh, that that starts to make like a lot of the swatch group brands look attractive so hmm. I think I think Movado on a larger you know in a larger picture has no, has been resting on its laurels a little bit and not really had much of a plan about the future. It knows it needs to attract new audiences and it knows it needs to understand marketing. Because, you know, as a company, as this gentleman Paul Ziff I spoke to, that was once so celebrated for its marketing, to do so little these days is actually quite interesting, right? You have to ask yourself, how do they, how do they go it is. so far backwards? And for them to actually purchase a company for $100 million rather than to replicate the strategy, which isn't that hard, I find yep. that to be very, very interesting. You know, uh, other groups, you know, let, let's, let's say like um, the Fossil Group, for example, has, you know, some brands underneath it that are – similarly priced I guess you could say or similarly designed they didn't go out and buy a brand they just started it up and I know they spent far less than a hundred million dollars I mean the good thing is these products are not complicated there's very little R&D 
I mean, mm. for literally, you know, under a hundred grand, you could have dozens of prototypes and samples and, and, and get some production running. Right? So the question is is a hundred million is a lot. Now is a publicly traded company that, that they also have uh, a duty to investors to look like they're bringing in new assets and bringing in you know new companies and new possible uh, drivers for profit. Do you think that this was a way of pleasing shareholders? I guess it is, and you know, sometimes I see the point in spending a lot of money on one big thing as opposed to uh, splitting it ten ways, and then you know, not really making the same sort of uh, progress. The question is whether or not this hundred million dollar investment will get them the progress that they need. I um, I I, I mean, I'd like to hope that that Movado has a bigger picture. And that uh, MVMT can continue to adapt and grow as a brand such that when there's a full handoff of management. Because right now, the people that are running MVMT are still doing so just under new ownership. Right. So that means it's not like they keep trying to boost the place in order to you know, make it more attractive to a seller. Now that they have a seller, yes, they have that contingency that they want to meet so that they can make more money. But I'm not. Sh- I'm. I'm not necessarily sure they're going to be able to do that. I, again, I have no idea what the details of those contingencies are. But if it if it has to do with sell a bunch more watches and expand the market even more, I don't know that they can do it. I think that they've 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 gone as far as they can in, in terms of gr- growing the market. Now, here's my question for you: What is the future of brands like MVMT? They again, they they came in here and they showed the traditional watch industry that there's a way of marketing that works really well that you have utterly, utterly been failing to do. And I think they also proved uh, to a large degree that there is um, a price point at which a certain audience wants to buy and above that they won't. Like the the traditional watch industry is like $5,000. It's a freaking great deal if you're 18 years old. And 18-year-olds are like, no. But $120 a little a little bit more likely you know what i mean there yeah there are two separate issues here that we are talking about one is um, you know what what's going to happen with these brands which was which was your first question and then the second is you know why do swiss brands think that you know 18 years year olds or 20 year olds will want to spend five grand or four grand at a freaking mont blanc or some some other nonsense like that which they won't and Actually, the two, now that I think about it, are sort of uh, linked together, the two issues, meaning uh, these brands that are aimed at younger people and are successful with, with, the, with the teenage generation or people in their you know uh, early 20s at most, um, they come and go because these tastes or these, uh, these fashion items, they come and go, Daniel Wellington and VMT, I doubt we will see them you know, um, so predominantly uh, in the next two or three years. We, we won't because... The generation that buys these products and looks at one another, hey, you, you have this watch, I have that watch too, so that's great. That connects us. Um, is going to grow up. They are going to go to college or they're going to graduate or whatever, and they will not look back and look at these products. And the next generation of teens uh, will just get some, some other type of product to be excited about. That's, that's what's going to happen. Um, and the same thing happens with four or five thousand dollar watches. You know, if I if I blew five grand on a watch, uh, not that I had that sort of money, which I didn't, but if I if I bought a watch when I was eighteen or nineteen year year old, um, I wouldn't want to look at that watch right now because I don't have the same taste that I had when I was eighteen or nineteen, and I definitely wouldn't want to spend that sort of money on anything when I'm that age, uh, um, given you know that I can't really uh, get rid of it and uh, and get out of it safely which you can't when you buy you know four or five thousand uh, dollars watch you will be able to sell it for like fifteen hundred or two thousand or something like that you could beat it up because you're a teen it will you know it's just not a good investment and that's the point that you know Swiss uh, brands and other luxury brands don't really see that unless you're extremely spoiled or fortunate or um, uh, you know or which is just simply rich that you can uh, throw that sort of money at a watch then you will not just simply won't get excited about spending that sort of money on anything. So there's a point, and these brands, um, getting back to uh, to fashion brands, they will go away, I think, because the generation that buys them and supports them right now will go away as well, uh, meaning they will grow up. Do you get the sense that some of the bigger brands, Movado and other ones that have been around for a while, feel scared that they don't know how to connect to younger audiences? They've tried some things. They, they just they feel 
very disconnected and out of touch and they and they purchase brands like this because they feel that this will give them that connection yeah the problem is by the time they make their minds up which i guess they took a, a few years here they are they are already you know they're they're uh, jumping on the bandwagon when it's it's already you know getting empty you know at this point it's it's still a little too late or if you want to look at it another way it's too much meaning too much money too late uh, i don't wish uh, you know anything uh, wrong to happen with MVAT? I, I, I wish them uh, ongoing success. But what they are doing right now is not sustainable in my mind. You know, uh, beyond the next two years at most. So we it's just not gonna be. Yeah, that. we've established a few things, and that is that MVMT has not been able to grow uh, more because they've probably reached all the people they're gonna reach. Right? There's only so many people you can target on social media, and you're and, and you're paying for it. I mean. When I say social media marketing, what I am saying is they're making advertising and they're using advertising options within Instagram, within Facebook to target audiences. This isn't natural um, accounts that just get popularity on their own. This is a lot of money spent each month. And this is more money spent each month on advertising than most other watch brands spend on advertising altogether. I think that's actually one of the biggest misconceptions is that even though there's this sort of sense that social media is organic, it's just as fake as any real reality TV. Oh, and yeah. It stopped being organic a couple of years ago, 100%. So MVMT yeah. and its, its contemporaries need to spend an enormous amount of money to keep reaching these audiences. And they know that there's only so much out there. And again, what did they do? They went to sunglasses in order to keep making money because they couldn't sell more watches to the same people and they couldn't find new people. So the question is, what is and this is I think what we're worried about what does Movado do with this are they just going to be happy with this large assortment of people and maybe try to get them into Movados or other watches as they as they grow up a little bit more you know if it's just the audience and it's just the email list and however many you know hopefully it's in the hundreds of thousands that MVMT has maybe that's worth it and maybe that's enough but I don't necessarily know what MVMT or Movado can do to take the brand to the next step without something really transformative and a strategy that, that doesn't really exist yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, do you think that someone else would have been in a better position to acquire MVMT? Like, if it wasn't Movado, who should have been? Like, who, who needed something like this? Like I say, I I don't think it's sustainable for for too yeah you know, for too long, you know. So I don't I don't think anyone should have bought them, you know, at this point. I think they sold, you know. Why would you want to sell something that you know is going to bring you a ton of money, um, and it's already self-sustaining, you know? Uh, which I guess the company is at that that they are still in debt, you know. So so why would you want to sell something for a hundred million or two hundred million dollars um, altogether if you don't think that this is the best time to cash in, right? So. I don't think that this was this is this was a smart move. We don't know what the motives of of Movada Group were. I know you have an upcoming interview with them, and I hope we will we will learn some more and uh, gain some insight. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's on my mind right now. That I don't think this was a, this was a well timed uh, purchase, especially for 100 million. I mean, look again. It's we we're in a challenging position because we work with all these companies, and again, Movado is a publicly traded company. Anytime anyone says anything. Uh, the, the the markets respond. We don't want to. We don't want to say that this was a bad move. We don't want to say that this was a brilliant move. We want to say that this was an interesting move, and that there are real challenges related to making it a success for both of them. Uh, the people that sold the MVMT are probably the happiest. Uh, Movado yeah. gets to look like it's doing something. Um, mm. There are, like I said, there are shareholder reasons, and there are tax reasons, and there's all sorts of reasons. That they that they wish to spend money, um, MVMT was available. It seemed to align with some of the things they do. I can understand why they would make this. I, I don't I make this decision. I don't sit there and be like, this doesn't make any sense. I understand some of the strategies, and I think that Movado Group felt like you know if, if it wasn't going to be them, you know someone else was was going to get it, and they might as well own those customers. But I am trying to put things in perspective for the rest of the watch community. Because I think that that re that you know, small brand owners, consumers, um, can misinterpret this and be like, "Boy, MVMT is blowing up." Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that that is what's 
what's going on right now. So I think it was just sort of important to, to put all this into perspective. Um, what do you think is going to maybe be the, the next move? What do you think is the next thing we're going to see? Do you think it's just going to be quiet, or do you think we're going to start seeing new products? I'm just, I'm just curious what you think is going to be next. Well, as I said, I, I wish uh, I wish MVMT uh, well, so I hope we will see new stuff, uh, hopefully a new design direction. Um, that would be great to take this somewhere else. I, I see that they already have a bunch of different collections, so they're sort of doing that, but I think um, because the customer base is going to change, um, it will have to change because, like you say, um, people stop buying these watches. You know, they buy one or two, and then they realize, okay, it was it was fun, but what's the point of me buying another one in another color? If they like the brand, they will want to spend more money with the brand. But for that to happen, they need different products. So I hope that maybe they can tap into what Movado has uh, in house, whatever that is, and use those resources to create something uh, something cool and new for MVMT. That would be great. I um I don't think that this is going to turn into a watch enthusiast brand. My hope is that Movado carries on what they've been doing and helps create a brand that is a gateway, that helps people get into better watches. I mean, look, these are simple watches, and if you're wearing one of these and you're young, there's no problem with it. But as sophisticated and, I guess, pretty well-experienced watch lovers, we can easily say, if you start here, we promise you you're not going to end up here. If MVMT is the last watch you ever get, you're going to have owned a watch, not really being someone that cares about watches. Mm, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, sometimes these things go both ways. Like with Swatch, I don't want to go down that <laughs> that right right now. But uh, but you know, there are some brands that some people would look at and think, oh, okay, watch enthusiasts, I'm sure, gonna like this brand because it's plastic and it's cheap and whatever. And yeah, we go crazy for um for for Swatch, at least for some of what they are doing. So these these things can go either way. It's funny because you're right. You look at these watches for like, you know, around 100 bucks, and then it, it forces you to ask yourself, if I was going to spend just 100 or $150, what would that watch be? And you and I, knowing what we know, and again, we know a lot more than other people, you know, are, are, have probably made the decision it probably wouldn't be an MVMT. But again, we're not, you know, uh, social media addicted 16 year olds that really want to look. You know, more attractive and, and and fit in a little bit more. It's entirely possible, but some of the the lifestyle around this, um, you know, attracts us. And my theory is that when someone buys one of these watches, what they do is not choose a product first and then choose the brand, which is what we do, right? We first choose yeah. a product and then we're like, do we want to get it from this brand? Yes or no? I think they're like, you know what? I like the messaging of this brand. And I know what my price point is and kind of what my style is. So I'm just going to kind of like peruse their watches and see what kind of speaks to me. I, I don't I don't see MVMT pushing any one product more than the other. Um, and, you know, outside of the way that they name their products and things like that, there, there's not really much of a difference. They got some chronographs. They got some three hands. It's really all about style. In fact, most of their chronographs don't have indicators on them at all. So, hmm. <laughs> if you want to use it as a chronograph, um, by all yeah, means. that's not the point. <laughs> and the and the irony is they weren't even the first people to do this. That was the yeah. first one I saw was a company called Void, and so that I think that's what's actually so interesting is that these designs and they do have some original designs. I don't want to take that away from them, but there's so other than I'll call it the way the marketing is done. There's so little actually new being done here, and again. What are you supposed to expect from two guys in their early 20s to start a company? Of course it's going to all be about marketing. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, let's not be, you know, yeah, let's be fair. And for a lot of big brands, luxury brands, it's all about marketing at this point because a lot of these brands are run by marketing people and not by product people, even historical brands. So we see the same thing happen, not just with $100 watches, but with $8,000 or $10,000 watches or $100,000 watches. That's, that's, that's time, you know, that's for another discussion, but uh, that also happens in the Swiss watch industry. I just wanted to be fair to these guys. Okay, so that, is, that has been our discussion about um, MVMT and its purchase by Movado. Um, this is an interesting conversation. We like to, uh, you know, know if people want uh, a little bit more of these types of business discussions to help put things into perspective. Um, if not, we'll probably still do it anyways. Thanks for listening Yay. to this episode of Spending Time, the Ablog to Watch podcast. I, again, am Ariel Adams, and I have been joined by David Breden, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, everyone.